Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, welcome! My name is Kayla and I release new videos every Monday about all things BPD. So if that sounds good to you, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below as well as the bell notification up top to make sure that you're not missing out on my awesome content every week. Now, I thought that to close off this year's BPD Awareness Month, I would talk about something that I think most of us experience having BPD and this is abandonment issues. I thought that because this is such a common experience, what better way to end this month dedicated solely to BPD. Now we all know that abandonment is a nasty son of a bitch. And if you're anything like me, you probably experienced your first form of abandonment when you were a young child. Me personally, my mom passed away when I was seven years old. And this first form of abandonment then serves as a catch-all net for all later forms of perceived or real abandonment. So my mom died. Maybe for you is your parents getting divorced. Maybe it was one parent that was working so much and never had time for you. Maybe it was your childhood best friend who ended that friendship. So whatever your form of abandonment look like as a child or maybe as a teenager, this tends to serve as this catch-all base for the remainder of our adult lives. And I'm not gonna say forever because BPD is not a forever diagnostic. So once you have your abandonment net installed in the ocean, whatever it catches feels like abandonment because as soon as something is in it, even if it's garbage and not real abandonment, well, the net doesn't understand the difference. It just thinks, I caught something, so it must be abandonment. So I wanted to take some time today to give you reminders for when you feel that abandonment net being triggered. And the first thing is that you are allowed to feel this way. You need to recognize the fact that being scared of abandonment and being extra cautious and fearful, this net that you cast onto the ocean was a way to keep you safe. When you were a child, if you lost something or someone really important to you, it is adaptive and normal to then be weary of other relationships. And just because it might not be quote logical, let's say in your adult life, you're experiencing something and you're perceiving it as abandonment, it doesn't mean that you're not allowed to feel that. You are allowed to feel your emotions, you're entitled to them, they make sense and it's okay. The second reminder that I have for you when you're feeling triggered by this abandonment net is that although you don't need to be nice right now, you're probably going to regret it later. What I mean by this is oftentimes when we feel abandoned or triggered by someone, they're not usually trying to hurt us. And so we don't need to be nice. And oftentimes I know I feel this way and I have felt this way a lot in the past is like my impulse is to be really critical and really mean towards the other person. But as you probably know from your own experience that every time that you do this, you end up feeling guilty later. And so ways to help with this is be to practice DBT distress tolerance skills. So it's to not make the moment worse, to really help to ground yourself and anchor yourself in the moment. And also letting this person know, like some things I say is, hey, this is not logical right now, or this is not anything against you. I just need to vent. I'm feeling X, Z, Y reason because of this past abandonment hurt that I've experienced. The third reminder is to give yourself what you need. A simple practice that you can start implementing today is to ask yourself, what do I need right now? If you need time alone, take that. You don't need to feel guilty about needing time, needing to do things for yourself when you're feeling triggered. And honestly, especially if you're feeling triggered by someone else that is not trying to hurt you and you're feeling impulsive and feeling like you're wanting to say all these very mean and critical things, removing yourself and giving yourself that actual time alone, what you actually need, is probably more beneficial for you and the person involved. Another reminder, and this is really important, is that when you're feeling that abandonment net being triggered, this is usually your inner child lashing out. And so it's really important to engage with yourself, engage with your dialogue as if you were talking to this inner child. Ask it what it needs. Let it cry. Be there for it. Support it. Give it warmth and support and kindness and try to help your inner child untangle this knot that it has confused between present event and past events. 
And by the way, when we're feeling triggered and this inner child tends to come out, we may feel this hurt, this past hurt that we experienced when we were six years old or 13 or 17 as freshly as we did back then. And this is okay. Once again, this is a function that helps us remind us of, oh, this is maybe a dangerous situation, something that feels very familiar and the last time I got burned really badly and so I'm just going to try to avoid it as much as possible. This worked and this makes sense and so being there for ourselves, being there for this inner child and providing it with the love and support that maybe it didn't get at the age where it's feeling triggered can help you heal and recover from this fear of abandonment. Another reminder that I have for you is to apologize and take ownership. So this is apologizing for your portion of actions in the event that occurred. This is not simply about saying sorry and brushing it off and leaving it as it is. This is about taking the time to apologize to other people involved that we're not trying to trigger you, we're not abandoning you, and explaining to them, I'm sorry, I got confused in my emotions about past hurt that I've experienced and I projected that onto today's situation. I'm really sorry. So stating, taking ownership and stating how it makes sense to help them understand how it makes sense. And then also stating what you're going to do moving forward. Is it that you're going to address this in therapy, that you're going to journal about it, that you're going to work at taking ownership more frequently and making those links more directly so your partner or family or friends don't need to do it. So it's really important to apologize and take ownership. And I know this may be difficult, but oftentimes when we can just do it and relay the information and how everything makes sense, you'll feel better about it. It takes some pressure off of everything being your fault because there's a context to your actions. It makes your partner, your family, or your friends feel better and closer to you. And this is a really good way of wrapping up a situation. Instead of just brushing it off, saying sorry, but you're resentful and you're not really expressing yourself, they're resentful towards you because there's no clear actions to be taken in the future. So it's really, really important to take that ownership, to be the bigger person, to own up to your mistakes, while also validating yourself and your experience. And the last thing, the most important thing, is that you are improving. Just by being here today, you're doing the work, you're working on yourself, and every day that you're reminding yourself, that you're practicing skills, that you're being open and communicative to other people around you, you're working towards untangling that abandonment net so that you can have a clearer idea and so that there could be more space in it so that you can recognize things for what they truly are. You can distinguish past hurt from present situations. You're doing it. You're doing an amazing job and that alone is motivation to keep going. You've already come so far. I'm really proud of you and you're doing your absolute best. I'm always searching to learn and to grow from my community that I built with all of you and so leave a comment down below to let me know what are some reminders that help you get through this abandonment trigger because I'm still working out my own issues and I would love to hear all of your wonderful ideas that I know that you guys have. On that note, thank you so much for doing the work, for working on yourself, for being here with me today and on Mondays in general. Thank you for being a part of this community. It has really helped me grow and it has been an absolute honor to share parts of myself with you and to have you all share parts of yourself with me. Have an amazing rest of your week and I will see you back here next time for another episode of On The Line.